not human offerings, animal offerings. The Rambam never says anything about human sacrifice. The Jews never had human sacrifice. Animal offerings, that's what it so the says. The people around the Jews used to... The people around the Jews, yes! So the animal sacrificial system was a way to help the Jews transition from, from that, the, which was in the surrounding cultures. Let's do it this way. The surrounding cultures that the Jews were not part of at all were mm -hmm. doing human sacrifices. And they were doing, you know, to their gods, which was the cows and the, and the sheep. And the Jew was set up by God and said, you're going to take those people's cows and sheep and you're going to shek them yourself. But the Rambam says elsewhere in 332 in Mor Nebuchim, is that the, to wean, use the word wean, to wean the Jews off, that the, the ultimate would be for the Jew just to pray to God without any of this focus, focus, right? Mm -hmm. and, but it was to wean them, that would be too difficult to just say, okay, you're going to pray to me, yeah. that, that we're going to wean them by, by giving them a short, you know, let them do animal offerings, because that's how they grew up. They grew up with animal offerings, and that's true we grew up with animal offerings, because we see that Noah had, was instructed to give seven... Um, no, had lost. no, 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 seven animals. Mm -hmm. When he came off the boat, he gave a... a, a he gave an offering of seven animals, right? Covenant. What? Yeah. Covenant. Yeah, you know, and, and, and it's always been our tradition all the way leading up to Mount Sinai that the Jews would always give, when, you know, a thank offering. That's the word I wanted, a thank offering to God when something did something right. So if there wasn't a continuation of thank offerings, then the Jews would feel like, whoa, you just took away that mitzvah from us. That's how we always connected with you. You know, this is like too radical. So it was that we, he, when Rambam says it's weaning us from animal offerings, which is what we had, not human sacrifices. And if I'm wrong, bring it. Show me where he says he's weaning the Jews off of human sacrifices. Because he doesn't say that. But still, the Rambam saying is that the sacrificial system is to wean the Jews off uh, sacrifices and it's like an intermediate step on the road to just... What we are today. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you agree with the Rambam? Yeah, well, sure, that makes sense, because, because you know, God commanded Noah himself, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he said, you know, prepare two of each type, but seven extra of each type that I want you to, to shaft. You know, God's making this command, you're going to have this thing. He's teaching us that... You know, we're thankful at the end of something, uh, some miracle happens, you know, like the water, sub, 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 whatever, goes away, that, that you give a thank to, to God, that you always remember to thank God. And, and that was what was taught to Noah, to his son Shem, and to his son Aver. And this is the, the practice that took place. And they always would, you know, when you thank God, you take one, some of your money, you buy a cow or whatever, and then and, and, and you, and you shut it up and you say, thank you, God. God... There was one time in the history of the Jews where we did a human sacrifice. And you know what that is? Uh, Jesus Christ. No. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go with a no on that. Oh, uh, Isaac? Yes. But we didn't actually shek them. We didn't actually shek them because God said, I want you to go take him and do this. And, and, and he, you know... You do whatever God tells you to do. And, and then Abraham took Isaac, his son, and he went to Shechem. And God said, no, I can't stomach this. That's, the Jews never did it. And he said, you know what? You're going to take that ram and you're going to shek it. So God is always telling the Jews, you know, even in the times of our forefathers, you, the practice is being part of Judaism. A big part of Judaism is doing the karbonis. It's bringing offers, offerings and sacrifices. So when God gave us the eternal Torah at Mount Sinai, he just said, you know, you're going to continue doing these things, and I'm going to make it a big part. I'm going to make it an ichor, a foundation. Like, there's five books of Moses, right? And one entire book is Leviticus. Leviticus means the laws of Levine, right? Which is all the carbon, right? And it's like the whole book deals with all the laws. So it's like one-fifth of the, of, the, the, of the Sefer Torah is dedicated to the laws of, that take place in the base of English. It's gigantic. It's... It's like a, so much of Judaism is wrapped up in these offerings and there have to, all the exact nature of making sure that like, you get the right amount of this on it and the, 
and you have to check it in a certain way at a certain time at a certain day and it's got to be done this fast and you know and there's a lot of details on this and it's like you know volumes of, of uh, you know the rom bomb and it's just there's so much on this you know and and, and the Talmud you know Zvuchim and you know what I'm saying there's like so much it's so intense it's a big part of Yiddishkeit and I, I spoke about this before this is why the idea of being a vegan doesn't work with Judaism it really doesn't go hand in hand. It's not cohesive because the foundation of Judaism, such a major cornerstone of the entire religion of being a Jew, is to want to bring offerings to God and check them and put them on a barbecue, spread a little A1 sauce on it, stoke it up, and eat it. That is Judaism. What did one Palestinian mother say to the other? I don't know. Kids, they blow up so fast these days. You didn't listen to a word. I did. Of it. You it was, were it tuning totally it out. Related. You were blocking. It was totally you were related. Blocking. It's like it's like human blocking. sacrifice. Even today, like the nations around Israel. You were blocking. Even you today, were blocking. the nations around Israel are committing human you sacrifice. You were like this. You were like this. No, no, you did not listen. Like, what did I say? What did I say? You talked about how important Korbanot is and Torah and Judaism and how the vegetarians have a. It's kind of a little bit iffy what they're doing. It's kind of like being gay and orthodox. It's like, uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. All right, go back to your thing. What's next? Free Messianic Bible. If you love Israel and Jewish people, reserve your free Bible today. Oh, whoops, that's an ad. <laughs> Tell them about that hamburger that you <laughs> What did a Jew do if he could not make it to the temple oh, to atone for his sin? What did Jews do today to atone for their sins? Do you want to rebuild the temple so we can sacrifice to God again? You want to answer some of those yourself, or are you asking me? I'll ask you. Okay, so the first question is, what, do you, what did a Jew do if he couldn't make it to the temple? Well, we, I don't know about all the offerings. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll break them down. We know in the story of Pesach that you have to bring a carbon Pesach, which is the, uh, the Paschal lamb, if you will, mm -hmm. and you have to shaft it on Erev, Yom, uh, Erev Pesach, the day before Passover starts, right? Well, what if you're like in the army and you're guarding the borders of Israel? Okay, what does the Torah say? It's Pesach Shani, 30 days later, you're allowed to go back down to Yerushalayim, and you bring a, and you get a second chance, and you shaft it that day. That's called a, that's one of the 613 mitzvahs. Is, talks about it is, 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 is the carbon Pesach Sheni. And it's for those who were tearing on the way and they couldn't get down there on that day to eat it. So you get a second chance. So you do get a second chance. Now you asked the question for all the other carbonics, and there's lots of different ones. There's the guilt offering and the, you know, uh, and the sin offering and the thank offering. I'm going to say your, your sin offering, your, your tshuva, tshuva, you know, you do, part of your tshuva is to bring the carbonics, right? Your tshuva is not complete. It's not accepted until you do it. So, you know, what's the deadline? What if you had no legs? And you like living in spot? How do you atone for your sin then? Like 3,000 years ago? You get what? someone to drive you down there. That's like a long way. <laughs> they didn't have such great transportation systems. What sin could you commit with no legs? <laughs> I mean, you weren't chasing, like, Charlie Shin's chicks around, I can tell you that. I mean, <laughs> you forgot to say morning prayers. You, f uh, you, you forgot to say hamotzi because you're in a non-kosher restaurant on Yom Kippur. And you were making a mozi, making a mozi. <laughs> I don't know. All right, I don't know. Okay, you know what? So, well, I'll tell you, folks. Listen to Levy, the moral leader. <laughs> Jews atoned for their sins then as they do now. They went to God. They said, God, I'm sorry if it was a sin between man and God. I'm going to do better. I'm going to uproot that, that wicked Teva impulse in me, and I'm going to transform it to do good. And if they did a sin against another human being, they had to make it right with that human, other human being before they could even show up at God too. And yes, we want to rebuild the temple. Both Rabs and I want to rebuild the temple so we can sacrifice to God again. And so for the first time, I'll eat meat. If we rebuild the temple, I'll eat meat. I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> I just want to say that, it, that you asked what did Jews do to atone for their sins, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is through tshuva. Tshuva is, uh, is repentance. Oh, we vote for the Democratic Party. Atonement. Uh-huh. One of the ways we atone for sins, we say we're sorry that we got money and 